after discussing an introduction to the cardiovascular system in the previous lecture, today we'll start discussing hypertension in simple and entertaining illustrations as usual. In this video we'll discuss the essential pathophysiology of hypertension, so we could have fun discussing the categories of the drugs used for it in the upcoming lectures. You can download the lectures PDF from the link down in the description. The first thing we should know is, what is hypertension? Hypertension is defined as either a sustained systolic blood pressure of greater than 140 millimeters Hg, or a sustained diastolic blood pressure of greater than 90 millimeters Hg. Hypertension results from increased peripheral vascular arteriolar smooth muscle tone. In other words, hypertension is a state of elevated blood pressure, which is the pressure exerted on the walls of arteries. Systolic blood pressure, is the blood pressure during systole or myocardium contraction, and diastolic blood pressure, is the blood pressure during diastole or myocardium relaxation. That leads us to the classification of the blood pressure. The normal blood pressure, lesser than 120 for the systolic, and lesser than 80 for the diastolic. And prehypertension, from 120 to 139 for the systolic or from 80 to 89 for the diastolic. Stage 1 hypertension, from 140 to 159 for the systolic, or from 90 to 99 for the diastolic. And stage 2 hypertension, equals to or greater than 160 for the systolic, or, equals to or greater than 100 for the diastolic. Although many patients have no symptoms, chronic hypertension can lead to heart disease and stroke. It is also an important risk factor in the development of chronic kidney disease and heart failure. Hypertension may occur secondary to other diseases, but more than 90% of patients have essential hypertension, that happens with no identifiable cause. There are some risk factors we should know. The family history of hypertension increases the chance to develop hypertension. Older ages, diabetes, obesity, smoking, alcohol consumption, stressful lifestyle, and high dietary intake of sodium are also risk factors for hypertension. Now let's understand the mechanisms involved in the control of blood pressure in the body, and that definitely would help us in understanding how the drugs work. There are multiple organs involved in the control of blood pressure, the heart, blood vessels, kidneys, liver, and lungs. There are two major processes control these organs to work in harmony in controlling blood pressure. The baroreceptors in the sympathetic nervous system. And the renin-angiotensin aldosterone system. So what happens when the blood pressure falls? Before we begin you should know that, three processes increase the blood pressure. Increasing cardiac output, increasing peripheral resistance, or increasing blood volume. A fall in blood pressure causes pressure-sensitive neurons in the aortic arch and carotid sinuses, that are called baroreceptors, to send fewer impulses to cardiovascular centers in the spinal cord. This prompts a reflex response of increased sympathetic and decreased parasympathetic output to the heart and vasculature, resulting in activation of beta-1 adrenoceptors in the heart, increasing cardiac output and activation of alpha-1 adrenoceptors in the blood vessels causing vasoconstriction, leading to a compensatory rise in blood pressure. The kidneys control the blood volume. Simply, when blood pressure falls, the kidneys release the enzyme renin, leading to a series of events that increase blood pressure. Let's discuss more details. There are also baroreceptors in the kidneys, they respond to reduced arterial pressure and to sympathetic stimulation of beta-1 adrenoceptors in the kidneys by releasing the enzyme renin. Low sodium intake and greater sodium loss, also increase renin release. Renin converts angiotensinogen, which is synthesized in the liver and secreted in plasma, to angiotensin 1, which is converted to angiotensin 2 in the lungs, in the presence of angiotensin-converting enzyme, ACE. Angiotensin II is a potent circulating vasoconstrictor, constricting both arterioles and veins, increasing peripheral resistance and blood pressure. Angiotensin II also stimulates aldosterone secretion, leading to increased renal sodium reabsorption and increased blood volume, 
which contribute to a further increase in blood pressure. These effects of angiotensin II are mediated by stimulation of angiotensin II type 1, AT1, receptors. So we can conclude the categories of the drugs that are used for hypertension, either they work as sympatholytics to decrease the sympathetic activity, interfere with renin angiotensin system, or diuretics to decrease blood volume. And that's what we're going to talk about starting from the next lecture. If this video was useful for you, leave like and tell us your opinion in a comment, subscribe if it's your first time here and keep following us.